This is Crow Inquisitors, Behind the Scenes. I'm here with David, and we are talking today about Dellen. How are you doing, David? Doing well. How are you? Excelente. Yeah. I am excited. I'm excited, my friend. We're recording this yeah. on the day of release day. First episode of Crow Inquisitors is out. Now, everywhere you find podcasts, like literally everywhere you find podcasts, I like scoured the, well this so the new podcast hosting site i'm using has a lot of more a lot more options for like getting it out to all the various places awesome uh, it's all pretty right. easy to do so it should be ev- everywhere so that would be ideal yeah 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 <laughs> so uh we're you know that's all all out and so what we're going to be doing uh every week is having various bonus content in between episodes right um and one of the things we're gonna be doing is these little behind the scenes bits where i talk with the cast uh i think there may be one or two where it's just me talking about one aspect or another aspect about the campaign like maybe how i came up with it or uh prepared for it those sorts of things Uh, but for day today we are going to talk with david about his character delon tan the holy knight of saran yeah. So, Dylan, or <laughs> I've already gone into RPG <laughs> yep. mode where I refer to you as your character. <laughs> yeah. Uh, David, yeah. What were you thinking exactly? We, we remember we gave the uh, the pitch for the campaign, right? Uh, Medieval Suicide Squad. Right. W- where did you come up with the idea um, for Dylan? I know we had talked about the the church being like the thing you were working for, uh, like a corrupt church. Yeah. So I think we knew, we knew that by the time you had thought of Dellen. Um, but yeah, I mean, what were your influences, inspirations, thoughts? Yeah. So yeah, they were pretty mundane. I think mostly it was me thinking, so we obviously were going to work for the church and I think I was just going to try and make me, if I was in a position where I was murdering people every day, basically, uh, because <laughs> obviously Dellen kills a lot of people and he I've never does. killed anybody. Yeah. And uh, so I was like, yeah, I know I wanted to be religious and I wanted to be, you know, interested in combat. At least that's the thing that I am. Um, but just because of the way the game came out, that turned out to be the only things he could do. Those two things, uh, <laughs> because, and I, I think I mentioned this early, uh, off, off stream, but, uh, shush my troll for uh, our Lord of the Rings campaign yeah. is probably the most egregious example of I can do one thing and that's it. Yeah. Uh, Dylan is the second worst. He could do two things, um, which was <laughs> he could uh, talk about doctrine and he could use a sword. Um, and that is because I spent all of my points making that gray, which if you're unfamiliar with burning wheel means it was sort of a heroic stat. Mm-hmm. Um, and that meant that I spent all of my points on it. So yeah, basically I just did the thing I always do where I wanted to be really good at one thing. Um, yeah. and I did it as hard as I could. And then I was also like, but what if he was, you know, religious and, um, uh, I think I had suasion as well. I think that was the other, his other skill. He could, he could talk about the doctrine in a True. persuasive way. So, yeah. Right. The two things you were good at is stabbing things and convincing people that if you didn't follow the religion, he would stab you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> An inquisitor, you might even say. I think that's yeah. probably uh, yeah, not, mm-hmm. not coincidental. Um, yeah. So one of the things I, I thought we would do real quick is I have your character up here on in the Roll20. Okay. Uh, yeah. And it, so Bernie and Wheel, you create characters uh, through a process called life paths, uh, right? You choose right. basically sections of your life and what you did during those sections. Um, and we don't really talk about that a whole lot in the actual like show itself um, because mm-hmm. they're already done off screen, right? Um, right? So real quick, I thought we that's probably what I'll do for all of these is just go through those real quick um, and talk a little okay. bit about that. Um, so Del was born noble then he was a page then a squire then a religious acolyte and then he ended his life path as a military order which is you know mm-hmm. the order of religious holy knights uh, yeah. that exists in Saron. so do you have any thoughts on on your choices there 
Yeah, I think I literally chose those because the other option was Born Noble, Page, Squire, Knight, or whatever. Like basically, there was there was one Born Noble path to Knight, and I didn't like that. And so I wanted to find something that was a little more had a little more flavor to it. it wasn't just literally the most cliche method of becoming an knight, knight you could possibly kind of have. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, that's kind of boring. So I want to come up with something else. And I think that was what originally pointed me towards. Um, the uh sorry the military holy military order or whatever because it had its own flavor and um i think it was still you still had to take those options but um uh, it fit uh, the campaign better and i think it was basically just as good like stat wise um so that was the main thing was i think i just didn't want to be a generic knight so <laughs> Yeah, I mean that that's that's fair, that's, and that's I mean that it, yeah. that is fun about the the fun thing about uh, Bernie Wheel is because it locks you into a setting so much. Sometimes you do have those moments where you're like, okay, well this is this is like where I probably should go character Bernie wise. <laughs> like this is like it's pretty good to do born noble page squire knight. Uh, oh, yeah, like you sure. have really good stats, really good skills. Uh, but yeah, I, I I think it's 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 awesome that um, because. The, the, and I think that's probably the thing that made Dellen mo- the most interesting because if he had just been I'm a knight eh, oh yeah not then super... I would have I would have literally just had the sword and exactly not anything else. exactly and that's it, it gave him the it gave Dellen the the other bit of flavor there that helped and honestly because you you mentioned right like you were kind of min maxing with this character you were trying to do like how can I be as good as possible with one oh, thing yeah. I mean, and yeah. I gotta be honest like I think I don't know if I ever really felt that way with Dellen um I think there you know there's one moment and we talked about this off screen where it's like whoa that's ridiculous um you know <laughs> you're really good at this uh and you, you pwn stomp people right? right um but uh for the most part the things that I remember about Dellen in this campaign are the religious stuff, right? Is, yeah. is him. Well, yeah. And I think that's the nature of the game as well, right? Is unless you're using the fight rules very often and we were not, it de-emphasizes combat in a lot of ways. Not that it's less dangerous. It's actually more dangerous because if you fail one role, you can die, mm-hmm. but just that it takes up less time. And so I, I think I still only lost one fight that I can remember in the whole campaign, but it didn't, take up as much screen time so i think it came off as off as much less aggressive whereas all of the religious stuff were full-on conversations that happened in character it took up much more time um which i honestly like because my biggest thing with stacking my points to be combat related is that i i basically and i do this with most of my characters i pick a thing that i want the character to not have to worry about like a fall a plan b that he can always fall back to or i guess Mm. a plan a um because usually you want to lead with start with that yeah (laughs) but uh you know because more or less i just want to have something i can rely on in a circumstance when i fail at what i want to do uh if it's something different and so uh, you know being able to kill people is a good one because usually you should not start with that but if (laughs) you can then it's a good fallback uh but for down it was just to start out anyways yeah um and so I felt like that worked really well because his ability to fight felt like a plan B because it was right. much more abbreviated. Yeah, um, that makes sense. So yeah, I, I think it, Burning Wheel does that well where combat's still dangerous because again, if you fail, you can the GM can just say you died. Um, but it's also very fast unless you're you're diving into fight. So yeah, and another another thing that um, I guess to mention briefly is just the differences between uh, fight bloody verses and and like a single role. At this point right. in the campaign, we haven't. I, I think I mentioned it at a, in a previous episode briefly. Uh, I at least talk about bloody verses later. Um, but just there's three types of right. combat in Burning Wheel, right? One is the I do a a, a post sword roll <laughs> with this person, and whoever gets higher wins, right? Uh, yeah. Then there's bloody verses, which is like you're stacking up dice on either side of a conflict, and then you roll once uh to decide like uh which side wins and then fight rules are the more intense like every blow is described sort of thing uh and i i honestly think i think we only do two fights in the entire campaign so far in regards to min maxing i remember uh i remember and i can't remember what character it was that maybe that i played with where i found this out but i remember being like we're probably almost never going to use fight so i looked at the combat 
and identify the parts of the character that mattered for fight. It didn't matter for every other kinds of combat. And I just didn't worry about them at all. Yeah. yeah. So for instance, his reflexes is bad. Yeah. Uh, are bad. His uh, power was not great. You it didn't okay, matter. So literally I just, re- I realized listening to the campaign, you ended up starting with a two in power. Yeah. I had really bad stats. And it's I had a two great in speed, I think too. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they were super bad. I, I really gived him trying to get a grace. Uh, agility which actually was my big pitfall because agility only has one or two skills on his skill list where it helps yep so i should have just made his sword gray yep but anyways <laughs> I re- i've since remade Dellen and he's much stronger uh probably than he is now even and i made him as a starting character but uh that was that was a further min maxing just in case you want to know what, how terrible of a human being i am uh where i was like we won't use fight so power and reflexes yeah. that only matter in fight i'll just leave leave those terrible and focus only on the ones that matter for bloody verses and for one yeah. guys. And it yeah. worked out for me pretty well. And it, it did. <laughs> I remember being terrified the first time we did a fight. Cause I was like, Oh, I'm going to get killed. And then we found out, well, maybe I won't spoil it. Yeah. But, don't, don't say uh, one way or the other, but yeah. Yeah. You'll, you'll see what I discovered. Uh, when we, when we do that, uh, turned out not to be so bad, but, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's funny looking at these characters again because it shows you how inexperienced we were with the burning wheel um yeah nowadays i I, me as a gm would probably not have allowed david to gimp his character like that um because it just doesn't actually make a whole lot of narrative sense for a holy knight to have a power of two um Mm -hmm. it's just kind of (laughs) silly you've also since refused my request for gray skills and stats numerous times exactly (laughs) yeah um well because technically in the actual like rules it's recommended that you like don't start off with grays um right and what did i do i said hey david and jared you can start with gray shade gray shades (laughs) um and and so i i ended up you know leaning into that and um, right. we're, we're definitely going to like learn more about why Dellen and Alphonse are so unique and interesting. Um, there's, there's, a, I actually did come up with like an in, in campaign reason for why you guys are like heroic. Um, yeah. but, uh, well, you know, we'll get there when we get there. I, I also don't think that it actually ended up being too much of an issue. Like, obviously I know that, um, we ended up feeling like the other characters were a little outshadowed because yes, or, uh, were overshadowed rather uh, because of that. But I think if they had both had things that were gray in their character sheet, I think it would have gone fine. Like, I don't think having grace gray abilities was really a problem. It was just that because we didn't all have them, then it, it shifted the spotlight uh, sort of unfair. Yeah. Um, and I think, did. I think there's a couple of reasons, right? Dellen and Alphonse, are just dy- dynamic characters to begin with. Um, they're very driven characters. Yeah. They had very clear That's goals true. from the very, very beginning of the campaign. The rest of the characters honestly don't, right? Uh, I That's guess Theo, Theo yeah. does um, at the beginning, uh, and you'll, you'll have met him yeah. yet at, at the point you're listening to this, but uh, next session we get int- introduced to that character. Um, and he has an interesting thing uh, as well, but uh, for the most part, Dylan and Alphonse were kind of like the driving force yeah. of the of the season uh, because one because of their good their stats that were really good right they were the paragons of both fighting and talking so everybody right. turned to yeah. them to do those things but also because of the the fact that their beliefs and instincts and traits were very driven towards progressing the game in a certain direction so right. which which is why I was really interested to do season three and i won't talk about season three at all but um that's why a season three was fun oh, yeah. for me uh though technically yeah. if you want to spoil any of this for yourself you can feel free to go to uh, my my youtube channel and watch the original live streams uh it will certainly be a subpar experience experience <laughs> excuse me because uh i haven't done any editing work on those and they're kind of annoying to listen to sometimes because of all the noises in the background uh but they're there so you can feel free to do that if you want to spoil things for yourself uh so so david uh one thing i want to talk about yeah. to you is what do you remember and uh, how did you feel about like Dellen's interactions with the other characters um and, and you know again yeah. without spoiling stuff we don't want to spoil like in- future interactions yeah, but right. h- how does Dellen kind of relate to his place in the party um yeah. those sorts of things uh yeah well so 
I have a few thoughts. The, the first one is he tends to, um, and this is something that happens with me in general, at least with this group. I think uh, I tend to, to fall into at least a, if not a leadership role, then at least a, a sub leadership role, right? Depending on the character. And, and in this case, my character was a noble, so it kind of made sense. Um, and also, he just threatened to kill people who didn't listen to him. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I know that that was a thing that happened and then was challenged uh, at least a few times during the game where other people were like, what if the murder hobo wasn't in charge? Um, <laughs> and uh, so, that was an interesting dynamic just in general is him basically just trying to hold on to being in charge because he feels like he should be. Yeah. Um, as somebody with six doctrine, uh, assuredly would. And six. Sword. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. <laughs> um, and, uh, what was the other thing? Uh, I had basically any time that Dylan interacts with, oh, pardon me. Sorry about that. You uh, pretty much any time that, uh, Dylan and Alphonse interact is amusing. Uh, you find out pretty quickly that Dylan doesn't like Alphonse. Uh, in fact, within the, about the first half an hour, I think you find that out pretty drastically. <laughs> yeah, um, it's the, the the first half an hour yep, of the show. Yep. The first real thing that he does uh, mm-hmm. and um, nearly succeeds at. Uh, yeah, I, I think the other major thing was uh, Dylan comes off way more religiously devout in the first couple episodes like he does later on um i had an idea for him as like super hardcore um into the faith and stuff to the point where he actually uh begins was going to begin like questioning it because he thought he knew better than everybody else Mm. in his faith um and i guess it did kind of I, I intended that transition to be a little more gradual, <laughs> yeah. but it, I think it ended up being pretty sharp. Like in the first episode, he's like, basically, you know, I deserve to be killed. And then in a couple episodes later, he's like, the church just doesn't know what they're talking about. Uh, yeah. So I think I, I turned on a dime a little too quickly there, but that I, is, I, I did notice that. And obviously, well. yeah. And obviously that's yeah. a, that's a minor spoiler. Um, but, uh, and I'll probably put a little addendum on, on this episode. Just be like, Hey, there's yeah, a few I'm minor sorry. spoilers. No, you're fine. Like I, I, this is all honestly important, uh, to talk to you, talk about with Dallin, uh, cause it is the driving right. force of his character. Um, so I'd hate to like not talk about it at all. Um, that's fair. But yeah, no, I definitely yeah. noticed that uh, as I went through is and, and honestly, that's the sort of stuff that happens in role playing games, especially at the mm-hmm. beginning of a campaign, you find the character and especially yeah. at the beginning of a burning wheel campaign. Um, <laughs> right. Because yeah. the way that burning wheel works is my my job as the GM is to look at your beliefs and instincts and traits and basically challenge you to basically find out, do you actually care about those things? And it turned out mm, with, yeah. with with Dell in a little bit, there are some parts of that that he didn't actually end up caring about. And that was you as, as the player discovering that um, where right. you're like, you know what? I'm not as interested in castrating Jared, <laughs> right? Yeah. Or cutting yeah. out his tongue. Like, I'm, <laughs> you know, there's, there's another aspect of this. I don't want to be so antagonistic towards yeah. everything basically it was me realizing that my character's religion was catholic and i'm protestant and so naturally i trended <laughs> towards towards <laughs> right. being a little heretical towards my own faith in the game and then also that's uh, so true realizing yeah. that it was only fun to threaten jared's for so many times and then i was like all right now maybe we should play a real game and not just be a jerk all the time uh-huh. um so yeah and and honestly like because i know we were talking about my interaction with other characters i think those it was showed up a lot where if I wasn't like religious thing at somebody, I was threatening them basically, mm-hmm. uh, even with other players, but also with NPCs. And uh, yep. I think especially like you said earlier, the whole religious thing was a, a large focus for his interaction with non-player characters, especially. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think as far as the world went, that was his big uh, sort of interaction point with them was yep. his sort of wrestling with that. Yeah, and honestly, so there was a time maybe a couple of years ago where um, I I had to I was taking a, a screenwriting class, and we had to basically um, make a treatment for a movie, make the outline for that movie, and then yeah. like make a like actually write the first act or first part of the first act or whatever 
uh, maybe the actual first, I don't remember the exact assignment, but uh, write part of the script for a movie. And my first inclination yeah, was, that. Yeah. yeah, the first inclination was to for me to do uh, Chrome Inquisitors as a movie. Uh, right like adapt Chrome Inquisitors as a movie and right. write that thing but uh, it ended up just not working I, when I looked at it I was like this is too long to be a movie uh, this is too much that happens <laughs> yeah. here uh, this works better as a novel and so immediately I was like oh okay I'll write a novel uh, it, again didn't end up <laughs> happening um, but I did I write a couple of scenes and I released those already um, uh, earlier in the week uh, for a bonus content thing but uh, the thing that I learned about that, about Chrome Inquisitors, as I was like outlining basically the book version of it, was right. season one is Dellen's story um, more than anyone's el- anyone else's, right? The, and especially in yeah. the way that I looked at it, um, because I was going to adapt it, right? I wasn't going to verbatim write right. what happened in the <laughs> session. I was going to adapt the the themes, the, the the important points of the season into like a novel. And what I found was the most engaging arc there was Dellen, right? It was Dellen figuring out what he actually cared about. Uh, with yeah. his religion um and, and obviously in a novel i would have like done a lot more to sh- like flesh that out in a way because i would know <laughs> right. the direction he's headed as opposed to you who were like you're just like uh i don't actually Making know where this ago. is happening and then you just kind of like decided <laughs> that i'm gonna you're gonna make a change um right, but it's yeah. still it's still kind of part of the driving force of the season uh is Dellen sure. kind of becoming less catholic <laughs> i guess yeah basically <laughs> um yeah and that was why later on i I don't think it's a spoiler to say that in later seasons, I, I played a different character, but others did not. So that I, because I felt like Dylan had had his moment uh, and I wanted other people to have a chance to do that. And I wanted to play sort of something of a different uh, direction. Yeah. Um, because I think, I think he definitely had the most, uh, well, I don't know if I'll say he had the most like, changed because i feel like a lot of the characters changed a lot oh yeah i think it was the most uh probably the most uh featured uh arc character arc i think probably Um, yeah the most driving maybe um especially because as part of the church religion is already a massive part of the setting uh and so it narratively uh linked pretty strongly with the through line of the campaign yeah um in a way that i think also helped bring it to be more a more prominent one in the first season. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you have any other thoughts on, uh, well, I mean, just anything, I mean, any other thoughts that you haven't shared up at this point in general? Um, and I can think of something else to ask. Um, I mostly just that I think Dylan was a lot of fun to play. Um, mm-hmm. He also got, I think he was sort of the turning por- point where I decided that while I still usually play the same kind of character in games, more or less. I I think this is the character where I got all of that out of my system as much as possible. And then usually I look for something I can change that's different about each character I play. Um, Mm -hmm. Because Dellen was sort of the, like I said, the the apex of the, it's me, but in a fantasy setting and significantly less uh, or more, more hostile. Um, (laughs) And uh, so that, yeah, he he sort of was was the kind of character I wanted to play in an RPG, and I got to do that. And so now I always look for for other things to try and explore. Since I I've gotten to do the sort of core interesting things so thoroughly since we we played this for quite some time, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I just really I enjoyed playing him. Um, I learned a lot from this actual game playing him as well uh, yeah. i know we talked about sort of overshadowing other characters early on yeah um, partially because of the stats but also it was just because at the time i was a, a less experienced player and i it still happens to me now and then mm-hmm. but um i mean i, all I feel us. like i've yeah <laughs> i feel like i've learned a lot about trying to to avoid that um from from this campaign as well so yeah, yeah it was it was a a fun character and a, f- a fun campaign and um I I still remember a lot of the moments pretty fondly. Uh, yeah, even you know years later. So yeah, yeah, it's a it's a good ride. It's fun. Yeah, I mean it's funny thinking about it now because this is kind of like the beginning of a new era in in our role playing games. Uh, and mm-hmm. it, because of that, 
these characters are probably the characters that I always think of as the quintessential you guys characters. Um, uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Like specifically, I mean, definitely with you and Jared. Right. Um, for sure. Uh-huh. Uh, but Connor, <laughs> but Connor to an extent too. Right. Like it, it's definitely very yeah. indicative. Cantarius is a very Connor character. Right. Struggles with uh, yeah. various moral definitely. quandaries and, you know, lots, lots of inner, inner turmoil. Uh, probably Antonius is the only one that wasn't that isn't quite my quintessential Josh character, and that's because that was the first yeah. time he'd ever played a long running campaign. Um, mm-hmm. Right. And to so. be fair, if if Cantarius was in a science fiction setting, he probably would have been the quintessential Josh character, but he couldn't do tech. So you mean he Antonius? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Antonius would have been the quintessential yeah. Josh character, but he couldn't do tech things because of the setting. Right. So he, I feel like he couldn't have been. Josh's You're right. You're right. Because, you know, character. Antonius was the the prequel to tr- to, to, to yeah. um to Till. Um, right to to our his Elysian right. Road characters, a character in exactly. a lot of ways. He likes playing big burly guys who uh, do crafting things. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, exactly. And in, and in so, you know, in Till's yeah. case, it was you know more computers and uh, and piloting and stuff. But uh, right, which obviously yeah, felt know. more like Josh. Uh, so really, Antonius yeah, is the proto Josh character, right? It was him figuring out yeah. what he wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very yeah, much for so. sure. <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, I think Connor also got to underline his um, theme of somehow failing all the things he's really good at every time because <laughs> yeah. Cantarius was supposed to be amazing at intimidation and then proceeded to be, he was supposed to be like Batman, except for Batman always succeeds intimidating people and somehow Connor didn't. <laughs> somehow he had a he six so many it. dice. Yeah, but. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of stuff so, like that that's yeah, funny. Sure. And, and that's that's what's funny about this campaign too. It's just like it's it, there there are a lot of kind of like mythological things. And I you know, I use that term to me, you know, mythological in the sense of it, it, this campaign became a lot of our kind of like hearkening to mm, the, yeah. the the central mythos of our gaming group, right? Um yeah, in a right. lot of ways. Obviously we have, you know, with me, you and and Jared and Connor, we have a further history going back into Savage Tide and stuff, and there's definitely the mythos stuff there. Mm-hmm. Um but Chrome Quizzers is definitely like the core of this new mythos that we started making. Um and you know, these characters came with us every other yeah. campaign we did after. Yeah. So. Uh, literally too, I think because as far as I know, this is the first setting in the new shared like rpg setting exactly using, it is, is yeah. still counts right yep mm-hmm. so yeah i think literally as well it was sort of the first dive into into that although i guess we didn't know it at the time we didn't know it at the time um yep but yeah yeah there was no way i was gonna make that and not have chrome quizzers be a part of it um because oh, it's course, just yeah. too it's too, the too essential you said, yeah yeah exactly <laughs> for sure Awesome. Cool. Well, well, thanks for, for chatting about Dellen. Yeah, my David. pleasure. It was yeah, fun. It's fun, fun. To, to remember it. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing what people think and, and yeah. hearing, or, you know, getting to relive the, the moments that uh, <laughs> most, many of which I've probably forgotten, but especially if, yeah. a few that I remember. Oh, I definitely have forgotten a lot of it. Um, especially when I started listening to the later episodes of the first season, um, like mm-hmm. five to, to 10, it was like, whoa there's a lot of stuff that happens that i just totally forgot about yeah, um, yeah i'm looking forward to, to re reliving yeah. that mm-hmm. yeah so you can find uh chrome kizzers obviously every saturday releasing uh once a week and bonus content in between um so i, I think i'm going to release this on either thursday or friday so uh it's it's pretty soon until we uh get the second episode of chrome Inquisitors. i uh, hope you guys have been enjoying and uh yeah I don't really have uh, uh, any more of an outro than that. So thanks for coming on, David. Yeah, Yeah, no problem. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the show. See you.